good morning to all of you we are going to discuss today the shaping of the ceramic part which falls under the broader category of processing of ceramic parts but before starting today's discussion let us see where we are in our course on processing of non metals as you are well aware that we are in the process of discussing the various aspects of our course that is processing of non metals presently we are discussing module number 3 module number 3 deals with the ceramics in the beginning of this particular module we have seen that ceramics have non metallic properties we have seen the basic type of bonding that is present in the ceramics we have also seen the basic properties of the ceramic materials the physical chemical and mechanical properties of the different types of ceramic materials although we have not discussed the basic aspects of ceramics in much more detail because our focus is on the processing of ceramic products but we have discussed the fundamentals in sufficient detail so that we can discuss the processing aspects at a later stage so that we can understand the processing aspects so we have seen that how the ceramic powders are prepared what are the different tools and techniques used for processing of ceramic powders we have seen the a mechanical type of route can be followed to prepare the ceramic powder and the chemical methods can be used to prepare the ceramic powders then we have seen that how we can give a shape to the ceramic powders today also our focus is on the processing aspects of ceramic parts so i have just highlighted that what we have covered in this particular module in the beginning we have seen the properties of the ceramic materials the basic definitions related to ceramics then we have seen the processing of ceramic powders and then we have started our discussion related to the process of making the ceramic parts in our previous lecture that is processing of ceramic parts we have seen that how we can make a shape of the ceramic part if you remember we have seen that there are different types of pressing mechanisms that are used to give shape to the ceramic powders if you remember the basic characteristics or the fundamental characteristics of wet drawing uh, not the wet drawing sorry wet pressing dry pressing hot pressing and isostatic pressing so four different types of pressing techniques were seen with the relative advantages and disadvantages of all these techniques and we are today going to see that what are the other processes which are used for giving shape to the ceramic parts so basically as you are well aware in our previous lectures we have already discussed that there are three basic steps that are involved in making the ceramic parts step number 1 is the preparation of the raw material in the form of ceramic powders so first of all from the raw ceramics which may be coming from the natural minerals or may be synthetically synthesized so depending upon the requirement we have a type of raw material which is available with us now this raw material is crushed or milled or grinded into the ceramic powder even chemical synthesis route can also be used to get the ceramic powder so basically our raw material in case of ceramics parts processing is the ceramic powder once the ceramic powder is ready with us we mix it with certain additives certain binders in order to give it a desired shape or to make a green compact as in the case of powder metallurgy so we make a green compact by different techniques that is we give a shape to the product and the last stage is the firing or the sintering of the green compact so that it attains the requisite density and the desired strength so basically three steps are involved step number 1 is the preparation of ceramic powders or the preparation of the raw material for ceramic parts processing second step is the mixing of the ceramic powder with the additional binders or additives in order to impart certain special characteristics and the third stage is the drying or shaping of the part into the desired shape drying and finally the firing 
that is also called sintering. So, basically three steps are involved, sir, but before going to these three steps, we should first understand that what are the various methods of preparation of ceramic powders and before going to the preparation of ceramic powder, we should first understand that what are the ceramic material, what are the special characteristics of the ceramic materials and why do we need to convert them into powders in order to make ceramic parts, why cannot we use the processes that are well developed and commercially available for processing of metals or polymers, what are the distinct characteristics of ceramics that make them a different class of engineering material. So, all this thing, all these things or all this discussion has already been done. So, now we have reached to a stage where we are in a process of understanding the conversion process from a raw material into the final product. We know how to make a ceramic powder and we know how to mix the ceramic powder with the various additives. Now, finally, our objective is to give a final shape to the raw material. So, the different types of uh, ceramic products you have seen. We have uh, dining cookware, uh, we have different types of uh, decorative items, there are bio ceramic, there are space shuttle, there are roof tiles, they are, there are floor tiles made up of ceramic material. So, different types of ceramic products are there and they have distinct shapes and shape complexities. They have different types of sizes. Now, depending upon the size and depending upon the shape complexity, we have to choose a process which would help us to give the ceramic raw material a desired shape. One of the techniques we have seen in our previous lecture that is pressing in which we have seen that we can go for dry pressing, we can go for wet pressing, hot pressing or isostatic pressing. Today, we will see some other techniques like slip casting, injection molding or extrusion which can also be used to generate a green compact or to generate a ceramic part which would further be subjected to certain secondary operations in order to make it a usable product. So, with this introduction that what we have already covered, what we are in the process of discussing, where this particular lecture fits in this lecture falls in which particular module and the module is a particular module of our course on processing of non-metals. So, basically we are discussing the course on processing of non-metals, we are discussing module number 3 in which we are discussing the processing of ceramic parts. With this introduction, let us now start our discussion. First and foremost, let us revise that what are the various stages involved in making a ceramic product. Processing of ceramic parts generally involves three basic steps. So, all these three basic steps I have already explained. First step is ceramic powder preparation. Some of the methods or techniques which are used for preparation of ceramic powders is highlighted on the screen that is crushing milling and grinding that we have already discussed with the help of the diagrams in our previous lectures. Crushing, milling and grinding are the mechanical ways of producing the ceramic powder. If you know, if you understand, if you have understood in our previous lecture, there are chemical methods also which are used for processing of ceramic powders like the precipitation method and the solid reaction method. So, crushing, milling and grinding gives us the mechanical route for processing of ceramic powders and the chemical methods such as the solid reaction, solid solid reactions and the precipitation method gives us the chemical methods. So, basically first stage is or the first step is to prepare the ceramic powders. Once the ceramic powders are ready, the second stage is mixing these powder particles with the additives. Why the additives are added? In order to impart the special characteristics to our final ceramic product. Once the mixing has been achieved, next stage is to give a shape to the ceramic part. Now, for shaping we have seen pressing is one of the techniques, slip casting, extrusion, injection molding, jiggering, there are another methods which are used for giving shape to the ceramic parts. So, we will see one or two techniques today which are used for giving the shape to the ceramic part. We will try to understand these techniques with the help of diagrams and finally, once the shape has been made or the green compact is ready, we will dry it and finally, do the sintering or firing of that part in order to give it the desirable characteristics. So, basically where today's lecture fit in, we are going to see that how the shaping of the part is done. That is the third stage of the total 
process of making a ceramic part. Step 1 or stage 1 is the processing of ceramic powders or fabrication of ceramic powders. Step 2 is mixing or making the raw material ready to be made into a ceramic product. Stage 3 is giving a shape to the raw material and finally, drying and sintering it or firing it. So, today we are going to discuss that how to give a shape to the ceramic raw material. So, one of the steps or one of the important processes is slip casting. But let us before going into the discussion of slip casting, let us try to understand that what are the various types of processes which are used for processing of ceramic parts. So, the focus basically is on two aspects, first is making the ceramic product and finally, doing the certain secondary operations on this ceramic product in order to make it more usable or more, more aesthetically relevant. That is sometimes we may be uh, interested in giving a particular type of glazing or a particular type of surface finish or particular type of coloring arrangement to our ceramic product. So, all these uh, uh, processes of giving a particular coating or giving a particular surface finish or machining a particular section or a feature into the final product falls under the secondary processing methods of parts processing or ceramic part processing. So, we will see that what are the important steps involved. On your screen you can see the different methods or techniques that are used for making a ceramic product. We can do pressing that we have already seen, vapor phase techniques are also used for deposition of ceramic particles on certain substrates. This particular aspect we would be focusing on in our last lecture of this module. Finally, casting that we are going to discuss today, sintering we will see in the next lecture. Finishing and machining are the secondary operations that are done on the ceramic part in order to make them more desirable or more user friendly or in case of improving their utility. So, basically the all these processes can further be classified into two categories that is the primary forming of ceramic parts and the secondary forming of ceramic part. So, basically primary forming means giving shape to the final product and doing the sintering and all other operations so that the product is ready. But before the product is put into use or sent to the market, there may be certain secondary operations like surface finishing or glazing that have to be done in order to further improve the marketing aspects of our pro ceramic product or of our product. So, basically right now our focus is on the primary forming that how to give a shape to the ceramic product. What are the secondary operations involved that we would be seeing in our next lecture. So, with this introduction let us now focus on one of the important processes that is used for processing or giving a shape to the ceramic part. So, first process that we are going to discuss today is the casting process out of which or in which slip casting is an important process. Slip casting is also sometimes called as drain casting. Why drain casting that we will try to understand with the help of a diagram. So, let us start our discussion with the first process that we are going to discuss today that is used for giving shape to the ceramic raw material, the material which is having the additives or the binders as well as the ceramic powders. So, ceramic powder plus additive plus binder uh, this forms the raw ceramic raw material and this raw material we have to give a particular shape depending upon the design requirement or depending upon the geometrical design of our final product. So, the first point on your screen you can see the ceramic processing technique in which powders are cast into useful shapes. So, before going to discuss this particular uh, aspect in case of ceramics, let us first revise that how, what do we mean by casting actually. Casting is a very common process which is used for metals or for making parts of metals and is one of the important primary forming processes in case of processing of metals. So, what is done in casting? A mold is made, usually a sand mold is made in case of temporary molding technique and in case of permanent mold casting metallic molds are also used. So, basically in casting what is done? A mold is there, it can be a sand mold or it can be a metallic mold. 
the metal is melted in the furnace there are different types of furnaces that are used for melting the metal the molten metal is brought to the mold in in ladles and then the metal is poured in the mold in case of sand mold it is usually gravity pouring and in case of permanent mold such as hot chamber or cold chamber die casting pressurized we can say metal is pushed into the mold so basically the technique is that we have a molten metal which is somehow injected into the mold material so casting process basically there is a molten raw material and there is a mold which has to give a shape to the final product the molten metal is poured inside the mold and it takes the shape of the mold and finally after solidification we get a final product which we call as a cast product so basically in ceramic processing also the same aspects or the same mechanism is there but here the raw material is not a metal the raw material or the molten material or the liquid material in case of the ceramic casting is a ceramic slurry so basically the slurry is poured into a mold the mold is not made up of a sand or the metal in case of casting in ceramics it is made up of plaster of paris so there are some differences between the casting in case of metals and the casting in case of ceramics that we will try to highlight with the help of the points that are there on your screen but first of all it is very important for us to understand that what is the difference between the casting of metals and the casting of ceramics so first important point on your screen again i am emphasizing the ceramic processing technique in which the powders are cast into the useful shapes so basically this particular process falls under the third stage of the ceramic parts processing stage 1 is preparation of ceramic powder stage 2 is mixing up of the powder with additives to impart certain special characteristic stage 3 is the shaping drying and firing so now we are discussing how to give a shape to the ceramic powders so casting is one of the important techniques and we have tried to differentiate between the casting of metals and the casting of ceramics so point number 2 the process selection is based on the powder material being processed the shape desired and the property requirements of the final part so this we have discussed in our previous lecture also if you remember we have seen that in order to choose a particular process for a particular application we have to take into account three or four important criteria that when we are choosing a process we have to see that this process is being used for which type of the raw material what is the type of the powder or the characteristics of the powder powder has got many characteristics or certain desirable characteristics which also we have covered when we have discussed the chapter or the lecture on ceramic powder preparation if you remember there are just i will revise that what are the important desirable characteristics the important characteristics are the chemical composition of the ceramic powder the phase composition particle size particle size distribution particle shape agglomeration these are some of the important characteristics of the powder now depending upon the type of the powder the process would be chosen next is the final shape of the product desired now if the shape is very very complex we have to choose the process accordingly and if the shape is very simple then a different process can be chosen for making that part finally the final property requirements of the product or the part that what are the desirable characteristics or the design requirements of the part which we are going to make by the process so basically these three or four important criteria have to be taken into account when selecting a process so we will see that slip casting in which cases this slip casting process can be used in case of making or giving a shape to the ceramic raw material another important aspect is the treatment of the starting powders is usually required for slip and tape casting and the treatment depends upon the final product so basically the raw material which we have prepared that is a ceramic powders that we have prepared in many cases they may be requiring certain treatments so these treatments are given in order to make them more usable for a specific process if 
we are not doing a certain specific treatment then the quality of the product that we will get may not be desirable. So, in many cases without even treatment we can make the final product, but for certain specific requirements we may require to treat the ceramic powders before subjecting them to the next processing step. So, basically casting is a simple process which is used for giving a shape to the ceramic part or for processing of a ceramic part into a green compact. Let us further see uh, we can say certain important aspects related to slip casting. So, casting is an important process which can be used for processing of ceramic parts. Slip casting is one of the you can say important casting types. So, a slip basically why the word slip is coming into picture? A slip is a suspension of ceramic particles in a liquid. So, basically the ceramic particles would be suspended in a liquid. So, liquid can be we can say a simple example can be water. So, ceramic particles can be suspended in water to make a slurry. The porous mold made of plaster of Paris is used in slip casting. So, two important parts are there as I have told in the casting of metals also we have a mold and we have a raw material. The raw material is melted in the furnace and the molten metal is then poured into the mold. The mold can be made up of sand or the mold can be a permanent mold made up of metal. So, there are two important parts the raw material and the mold and the raw material in the liquid form when it will go inside the mold it will take the shape of the mold and after solidification we will get our cast product. So, here also the two important parts that is the raw material that is going into the process is a slip. A slip is a suspension of ceramic particles in a liquid. So, the raw material is going into the mold in the form of a liquid and therefore, it will take the shape of the mold whatever is the design of the product we will make a mold accordingly. Then the porous mold, porous is also important we will see why the mold is porous. A porous mold is made up of plaster of Paris. So, the mold here is not made up of sand or metal, but it is made up of plaster of Paris and therefore, this process is a economy, economical process it is not a very very costly or expensive process. So, a porous mold made up of plaster of Paris is used in slip casting. The slip must have optimum fluidity to flow easily into the mold. So, slip is a liquid. So, it should have optimum viscosity so that it is able to flow into the mold of plaster of Paris easily. So, basically we have tried to understand in this slide that why we are calling the process as slip casting, what is basically a slip and what is the material of the mold that is used for processing of ceramic parts using the slip casting technique. And finally, we have seen that this slurry or the slip should have optimum viscosity so that it is able to flow into the mold or it should have optimum fluidity so that it is able to flow easily into the mold. So, next stage is the steps involved in the slip casting process that how actually the slip casting process takes place. Now, let us try to understand the steps that are involved in slip casting process. So, these are some of the important steps there are 5 bullets or 5 points in this particular slide. So, the steps in slip, slip casting process are step number 1 the slip is poured into the mold. So, the slip is prepared what is a slip it is a we can say suspension of ceramic particles in a liquid the liquid can be a, a simple type of a liquid like water. So, we have a slurry in which we have the ceramic particles. So, the slip is poured into the mold. So, the mold of plaster of Paris a porous mold of plaster of Paris is prepared depending upon the shape of the final product. Now, whatever is the shape of the final product accordingly the mold of plaster of Paris is prepared and the slip or the slurry which contains the ceramic particles is poured into that mold. Step number 2 the capillary action of the porous mold draws water from the slip and forms a solid layer on the inside of the mold. So, you we have a mold 
we have poured the slip inside the mold and because of the capillary action in the mold because it is a porous mold that we have seen in the previous slide also. So, because of the porous nature of the mold and the capillary action taking place the water, water because we are assuming that the slurry contains the water because the suspension of ceramic particles is supposed in water. So, this water would be drawn into the mold by the capillary action and a solid layer is formed on the inside of the mold. So, this is suppose the mold on the inside of the mold a solid layer of the ceramic product would be forming. So, step number 1 is pouring of the slip into the plaster of Paris mold. So, the slip is poured into the mold, the mold is porous in nature, the capillary action of the porous mold draws the water from the slip, the water we can say is absorbed into the plaster of Paris mold and a solid layer of ceramic product is formed on the inside of the mold walls. Next step is when the desired part thickness has been obtained, the excess slip is drained out. So, depending upon the thickness that we want to achieve or the part thickness or the section thickness that we want to achieve. When that thickness has been achieved, the remaining slip is drained out of the mold. This process is sometimes analogous to the slush casting technique which is sometimes used in case of casting of metals. So, slush ca in slush casting also we drain out the excess metal and here also when we have achieved the desired thickness the excess slip or the slurry is poured out through the nozzle opening. So, when the desired part thickness has been achieved we will remove the excess slip or we will drain out the excessive slip. The part is usually dried in the mold to cause it to shrink away from the mold and develop adequate rigidity for handling. So, we will allow the mold to be in the closed position for certain amount of time so that the mold a is allowing the drying of the ceramic part which has been formed inside the mold. So, basically our objective is that it should dry to certain extent, so that when the mold is open and the ceramic part is taken out, it is easy to handle. If it is not easy to handle, there is every chance that it may break. So, basically we will allow the certain time amount of time depending upon the type of the abrasive or the type of the ceramic material and the type of the slurry that we are using or the type of the we can say uh, liquid that has been used. So, depending upon all these requirements, depending upon the section thickness, there are number of parameters that would be taken care of to decide on the amount of time for which the mold would remain closed. So, the mold would be allowed to remain closed for a certain amount of time, so that the material that has formed or the ceramic part that has formed inside the mold attains a rigidity, so that it becomes easy to handle that part after taking it out from the mold. Next step, uh, next stage is the slip is continuously supplied to replenish the absorbed water for solid ceramic part. So, the first four steps deal with the processing of hollow ceramic parts because the excessive slip is being poured out or drained out of the plaster of Paris mold. But suppose we want to make a solid part, then what we should do? We should keep on replenishing or keep on pouring the slip or the slurry continuously, so that to compensate the amount of water which has been absorbed by the porous plaster of Paris mold. So, basically we want to highlight here that the slip casting technique in case of ceramic parts can not only be used for hollow parts, but can also be used for processing solid ceramic parts. So, basically there are four steps involved. Step number one is pouring of the slip into the plaster of Paris mold. Second step is the absorb, uh, absorbing of the water by the porous plaster of Paris mold and the formation of a solid layer of ceramic on the mold wall. And third stage is when the desired thickness has been achieved, the excessive slip is slushed out or drained out 
or is poured out from the mold when we get the desired thickness and the last step is that it is allowed to dry inside the or the ceramic part is allowed to dry inside the plaster of Paris mold so that it attains the adequate amount of rigidity so that it becomes easy to handle and does not break when it is taken out from the mold. Finally, if we want to make a solid part, then continuously we have to replenish the slip into the plaster of Paris mold. So, these are the important steps that are followed in slip casting technique. We will try to understand this with the help of a diagram also. On your screen, you can see the diagram. If you have understood all the four stages, then it is easier to understand this diagram also. You can see, I think the font size is not uh, adequate, but I will explain this in, a, in detail. This is the ceramic powder. For example, we can take it as a clay powder. So, this is a powder or a ceramic powder plus the dispersing agent plus water. So, this is our we can say the raw material, it forms a slurry, this is our slurry. So, this is the raw material which has been mixed together. If you remember the three stages of processing of ceramic part, first one is the preparation of ceramic powder, mixing with certain additives. So, additives plus the powder makes our raw material. So, the raw material in the form of a slurry or slip is poured into the mold, this is the mold, this is made up of plaster of Paris, the mold is made up of plaster of Paris and then we have a valve, this valve is closed, slurry is filled inside the mold. After certain amount of time, when the desired thickness, this solid portion or solid lines indicate the desired thickness has been achieved. When the desired thickness has been achieved, the valve is opened. Here the valve is closed. The valve is opened so that the excessive slip is drained out. This is a container which can be used for collecting the drained out slip or drained out slurry. Therefore, sometimes it is called as drain casting also. So, drained out slurry comes out from this wall which is opened at a later stage when the desired thickness or the desired wall thickness of the ceramic part has been achieved. Finally, the mold opens and we get the desired product or the cast. So, basically we can see there are three or four important steps that are involved in the slip casting of ceramic parts. Finally, we get a desired shape. So, once we get the desired shape, we have to go for subsequent operations such as fire drying or firing or sintering. And finally, if some holes are required, machining has to be done. In slip casting, we will see certain time flash is formed. So, that flash has to be trimmed off, it, a wire brush can be used to remove that flash or certain times it can be trimmed off with the help of manual or hand tools. So, this is basically the simple representation of the slip casting process. Now, let us see the secondary processing. We are, we have been able to form a shape of the ceramic part. The flash that is formed like in forging operation, in forging of metals also many a times flash is formed. So, the flash formed is removed. We can use a wire brush to remove that flash. Secondly, the green ceramic parts may require machining for special geometrical features. Sometimes we may require a hole inside the ceramic product, sometimes some additional cut is required. So, whatever are the geometrical features required that are cut into these green ceramic parts before subjecting them, subjecting them to the other secondary operations. So, this is not done by the conventional machining operation, simple machine to simple hand tools are used and the operations are usually done manually. So, the conventional techniques are not employed, but simple hand tools are used to cut the desired features. So, basically the desired features are cut with the help of hand tools manually. There are other secondary operations also that are involved once we are able to give a shape to the final product. If you see in case of uh, slip casting, what has been, what is our final product or what was the objective? So, the objective was 
to give a desired shape depending upon the final requirement to the ceramic raw material. In the diagram we have seen the raw material is the ceramic powder, there a ceramic powder is converted into a slurry with the addition of certain additives as well as the binder as well as the dispersing agent or the liquid. Once a slurry is made we are inputting that slurry into a mold and finally, we are making the liquid into a solid. So, solid part or a green compact is prepared. So, the objective was basically to convert the raw material into a solid part. Once the solid part is ready, it has to be subjective, subjected to certain secondary operations, so that this part can be used for the desired application. So, basically we have seen that what is the slip casting process. But this process has got certain advantages, on the contrary it has got certain limitations or disadvantages also. So, now we will try to understand that what are the important advantages and limitations of the slip casting process. Now, the important advantages are the process is an economical way. So, first important advantage is that slip casting is economical. Why? Because the mold that we are using is a plaster of Paris mold which is not very costly. In place of plaster of Paris, suppose we use a metallic mold then the cost may be relatively higher as compared to a simple plaster of Paris mold. The raw materi material we are making and it is being poured as in the example we have seen it is being poured under gravity. So, there is no we can say mechanized way of pouring the slurry into the mold. In certain further advancements of this process uh, for example, pressure casting many a times pressure may also be used to inject the slurry into the mold, but the process we have seen today of simple or the fundamental slip casting the slurry is uh, poured under gravity into the plaster of Paris mold. So, the, all the we can say uh, technique involved or all the we can say process in processes involved or the steps involved in this process are not very costly. The pr preparation of the raw material, the pouring of the raw material into the mold, the preparation of the mold all these are very economical stages or economical uh, processes that make up the total process of slip casting. So, the process is economical because uh, we do not have require any uh, expensive or any high and sophisticated instrument or instrumentation for this process. So, the process is economical this is again uh, summary of whatever we have discussed. Second is it can be used to make complex shapes. Another advantage is that the process of slip casting can also be used for processing of complex shapes. So, as we have seen in our previous process that we have discussed in our last lecture that is the process of pressing for giving the desired shape to the ceramic raw materials. One of the limitations was that it can be used for simple shapes only, but in case of slip casting we can go for fairly complex shapes. So, two important advantages are that the process is economical, the process can be used for complex shapes and it can also be used for large parts. Point number 2, the slip casting can also be used for large parts. So, three salient or important advantages of using the slip casting technique for giving shape to the ceramic parts are that it is economical in nature, it can be used for complex parts and finally, it can be used for large parts. So, in case of pressing we have seen that if the part is very large then pressing cannot be applied, because sometimes in many pressing techniques we get a non-uniform density gradient. So, we have a high density in one particular zone of the product and a fairly different density or a lower density in the other zone. Sometimes we have density on the outer periphery the density is high towards the core the density is non-uniform. So, pressing can be used for making different types of ceramic shapes, but the density distribution sometimes is not uniform. But in case of uh, slip casting technique we can make large parts where the uniform density would be there all along the bulk of the 
part or all along the bulk of the material. So, basically the three important advantages of our process of slip casting are the economical process, it is a economical process, it can be used for complex shapes and it can be used for large parts. But apart from these three advantages on your screen towards the end you can see there are two important limitations also. Now, what are these limitations? The limitations are the production rate is low because you can see first the preparation of the raw material although it is required in all the processes that are used for processing the ceramic part, but then we have to pour it, give it certain time to for the desired thickness to form on the inside of the mold wall, then keep the mold in its position for a certain amount of time, to, uh, giving the time for the thickness to dry up. So, production rate is relatively low. And another important point is that the it is difficult to control the dimensional accuracy. So, dimensional accuracy is also an issue in case of the slip casting technique. So, although it is an economical process, it can be used for complex shapes and it can be used for large parts, but it has got two important limitations in the form of production rate and the dimensional accuracy. But still slip casting is used as one of the important processes for giving shape to the ceramic parts. So, now we will focus our attention on some other techniques quickly we will see which are common techniques which are used for polymers also and they are also used to give shape to the ceramic parts. So, till now we have discussed one of the important techniques that is slip casting. The fundamental aspects only we have covered. There can be other important aspects related to the process variables in this process that can be discussed in detail. But the objective of this particular uh, lecture is to highlight the fundamental aspects of the process of giving shape to the ceramic raw materials and for that we have been able to successfully see that slip casting is an important process which can be used for giving shape to the ceramic parts. Now, let us see some other processes which can be used for giving shape to the ceramic parts. One of the important process is the injection molding or uh, we can say the name CIM or the ceramic injection molding. In case of metals it is called the metal injection molding and in case of polymers we simply call it as the injection molding of polymers or inj simply injection molding. So, ceramic injection molding is used for precision forming of ceramics and this process is specifically used for high end applications like uh, aerospace applications or in many cases sometimes may be employed, employed for making bioceramic parts also. So, injection molding is a process which is quite widely known or worldwide known for processing of plastics or polymers, but in today's lecture we are seeing that it can also be used for processing of ceramic parts into the desired shapes. So, it is used for precision forming of ceramics that is it is used for high end applications of ceramics. The raw material is mixed with the binder which is a common process in all ceramic forming techniques. So, the raw material is mixed with the binder. The binder in this case is usually a polymer which can be polypropylene or wax. There can be other types of polymers also or specific polymers that can be used as the binding agents for ceramic particles. So, the raw materials are mixed with binder. The binders the examples are given on your screen that polypropylene or wax can be used. The binder is removed by pyrolysis and sintering is done. Once the part is ready then the pyrolysis and sintering is done. And finally, the process is useful for thin sections and can be used for most engineering ceramics. So, some of the important ceramics are alumina or silicon carbide and these particles can be used in a binder of polypropylene or wax or some other polymer depending upon the we can say the characteristics of the polymer and the uh, ceramic material or the ceramic particle, they can be mixed together and can be injected into the mold cavity to give the desired shape. So, in injection molding we will just try to see 
or understand with the help of a diagram that how the process takes place. Although this process we are going to discuss in detail in case of polymers which is going to be an another module in which we are going to see the processing of plastics where injection molding, extrusion, rotational molding all these processes would be discussed in detail. But today we will just have an overview of the injection molding process that how the process actually takes place. And in case of ceramics there are few important points to be taken care of that is already there on your screen that injection molding in case of ceramics is used for precision uh, for precision uh, forming of ceramics that is for high end applications only. The raw materials are mixed with the binders, few examples of the binders are given on your screen and later on the binders are removed to get a dense uh, ceramic part after sintering and finally the process is useful for thin sections and can be used for most engineering ceramics such as alumina and silicon carbide. With this we now go on to the diagram of the simple injection molding process. So, we have the powder raw material here, this is a hopper, the raw material is kept here, it is mixed with the binder that are there. We have already seen what are the different types of binder, two examples we have seen for the binding agent. So, powder and the binder comes from the hopper and there is a piston on your screen which pushes this mixture into the mold cavity. Now, this is the mold two halves of the mold, one half is a stationary half, another half is a movable half. When the two halves of the mold combine together, we get this shape of the final product, this light green color shape is the final product that we want to produce. So, the two mold halves would combine together and would form the mold cavity and the raw material in the form of ceramic powder which is having the binder or which has been bound by the binders or the polymer binders is pushed into this mold cavity by this piston and it is allowed to take this shape. And finally, the mold halves open and the shape or the green compact is taken out and is put to subsequent processing or subjected to the additional steps before it is brought into the usable form for a specific application for which it has been designed and processed. So, basically the process is fairly simple, the raw material comes, the raw material contains the ceramic powders and the binders, the binders in this case are polymers, different types of polymers can be used, it is pushed into the mold cavity, the mold cavity has been generated into the two halves of the mold, one half of the mold is of stationary half, another half of the mold is a movable half and the movable half after the process is complete, the movable half opens and the final product is taken out. So, this is a basic working principle of the injection molding process and the ceramic injection molding also uses the same mechanism. And this process we would discuss in detail in our section or in our module of processing of plastics. Now, let, but this particular process can also be used for processing of ceramic parts or for giving shape to the ceramic parts. Coming on to the process of extrusion. In extrusion, one example is taken the clay mixture, the raw material can be in the form of a clay. The clay mixture is extruded through the screw type of extruder. There can be different types of extruder, you can have a ram type of extruder also, but usually a screw type of extruder is used. We will see the diagram of the screw type of extruder. So, the clay mixture is extruded through the screw type extruder. The mixture usually contain high moisture content or 20 to 30 percent of water content. It is used for constant cross section parts only and production rate is high and the tooling cost is low. So, some of the important characteristics of the extrusion process in case of ceramics is given with an example. The clay mixture is extruded through the screw type of extruder, the moisture content is high. It is used for constant cross sections only and the production rate is high as well as the tooling cost is low. So, for making the ceramic or clay 
parts which can further be subjected to certain other operations to get the desired shape. So, in order to make a raw material of a ceramic part which can be having the binders in incorporated into the ceramic particles or ceramic particles plus binders mixed together extruded through the extruder gives us a part which can be further subjected to shaping operation to give the desired shape. For example, extrusion in combination with jiggering can be used to give a desired shape to the ceramic part, but extrusion is a primary step to give a shape to the ceramic raw material. The raw material can be clay as one of the examples. So, we can make a clay part which can further be subjected to the other operations in order to give it the desired designed shape. So, basically we can try to understand the basic working principle of the extrusion. So, this is a screw type of extruder. This is the final part that is coming out. So, depending upon the opening here, we can get the final ceramic part. Depending upon the shape of the opening, we will get the shape of the final ceramic part. That part can further be subjected to other operations, even shaping operations to give it the desired shape. But extruder will help us to make the raw material ready for further operations or to give a particular shape to the raw material which can further be subjected to other operations for giving it the designed shape. So, we have a rotating screw here which is used to feed or which is used to push the ceramic raw material out of the die opening which gives it the desired shape. So, basically our objective in today's lecture was to understand the various processes which can be used to give shape to the ceramic raw materials. So, basically three steps are involved in making the ceramic parts. Step number one is the processing of or the fabrication or the preparation of ceramic powders. Step two is the mixing of the ceramic powder with the different types of additives in order to impart certain special characteristics to the final product. Step number 3 is shaping, drying and firing of the part in order to get the desired final product. Today's focus was on shaping in which we have seen that using the slip casting technique we can give the shape to the slurry. Using the injection molding technique, we can make a ceramic part or give a shape to the ceramic part as well as using the extrusion process also we can give a shape to the ceramic raw material. So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture and in next lecture that is the last lecture in this particular module on ceramics, our focus would be the secondary processing techniques which are used for processing of ceramic parts or the techniques which make the product usable for the various engineering applications. Thank you.